Good evening, everyone. This is Cricket Lot for Wednesday, December 14th, 2022. This is our last class for this year. We're going to skip the next two weeks, take a little holiday break there, let you get your shopping or your wrapping or whatever done. And, um, and then we'll start back up again after the first of the year with the January gifts with purchase. So tonight we are talking about um, the oils of the Bible or oils of ancient scripture, um, whatever resource you use, that's the title they use. So um, two excellent resources if you want more information about that. This book called Healing Oils of the Bible by Dr. David Stewart is excellent. It does not come spiral bound like that. I took it to Kinko's and had it spiral bound, which makes it easier to use. But there's a whole um, class in the back that he gives permission right in the book, printed with permission to give an at handout has handouts at Bible Oils programs. So you are allowed to copy this and use it in your own class. And this book will just take you right through the class. Or you can buy this DVD and just play it at your class and pass around the oils. So um, I have the links for those two things in the email that I'm gonna send you with the handout. So uh, how, how much is the book? Um, I don't remember. It's like a $29.95 or something okay. like that. Yeah. Okay, so um, let me share my screen here. And um, so we're, this kit comes with 10 oils. I used to have 12 or 14, but it just has 10 now. And these oils were used by the Egyptians as early as 4,500 BC. So 6,000 years ago, Egyptians were using these oils. Scripturally, the oils appear in the Bible time and time again. They often reference olive oil, but the oils we are about to explore are all also mentioned. So, so um, is there anybody that's never been um, exposed to the oils of the Bible kit? It's okay. Bonnie, you not never all, have? Not all of them. I, I've never. Um, what, no, what I, have, I have the oils of the Bible kit. Oh, okay, great. Um, so it looks what was like that, Susie? Ellis, I really like your personality. Yes. So I, you need I to have erase class. Ms. Ellis's name and put her name here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, you've done our class before, Linda. Okay. So um, the script that I'm using is from Grow Workspace. So you can also get uh, a subscription with them. That's where a lot of my classes come from. But um, the one, if you just buy the book, The Oils of the Bible, you'll get the, um, the uh, information in there. So, um, so you all know, of course, quality, seed to seal with Young Living. Um, you know, there are places you can buy frankincense for $12.95 for a you know, a big bottle of frankincense, but I can guarantee you it's not the kind of frankincense that you get from Young Living because Young Living is the only company that's allowed to ex export frankincense resins from uh, Oman, where we get our oil from. And we um, distill it right there where we get the, so you get the resin and then you put the resin in the, the distiller, distiller and that's that. how they distill frankincense. So, um, okay, so we're gonna talk about aloes, um, also known as sacred sandalwood. So the um, Bible verse here is John 19, 39 and 40. 
And it is, he was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes. So myrrh and sandalwood, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two men wrapped it with the spices and strips of linen. And this was in accordance with the Jewish burial customs. So aloes appears in the Bible five times in both the Old and New Testament. And it's believed to be made from frank and, um, fragrant sandalwood. Most notably used to prepare Jesus' body for burial. So historically, it is thought to be one of the oldest types of incense used during rituals and meditation, especially among the Egyptians for embalming. So the amount of aloes that Nicodemus brought shows his incredible wealth. Um, 75 to 100 pounds of sandalwood um, in today's market would be over $200,000. So it shows how important Jesus was to them that they were willing to spend that or use that yeah. resource for his embalming. So um, sandalwood, it has a warm, woodsy, and slightly sweet aroma. And upscale spa treatments and yoga studios. Yeah. Um, use it to enhance their members' experiences. So um, try diffusing it when you're a little revved up or um, when your mind won't turn off. It can be really effective to use before bedtime. You can use it as a perfume or cologne, and it has great properties for the skin. So apply topically to enhance the nat nat natural radiance of healthy looking skin. And it might reduce the appearance of fine lines, pumpy, puffiness, and blemishes. A lot of um, Young Living's skincare products have sandalwood in it. Okay, next one. Um, cassia. So cassia is a spice made from the bark of East Asian evergreen trees. And it's in the same family as cinnamon. You'll notice it smells a lot like cinnamon. It's much stronger than cinnamon. So um, be extremely careful if you get the oils of the Bible kit. Cassia is extremely hot and very strong. So um, the Bible verse is Psalm 45, 8. All your robes are fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia from palaces adorned with ivory. The music of the strings makes you glad. So um, cassia is mentioned three times in the Bible, all in the Old Testament. It was a key ingredient used in temple worship. And it was also used as the anointing oil and the oil that burned daily in the temple lamps. And of course it dates back to Egyptian times also and was used during um, mummification. It is noted for its unmistakable fragrance and calming aromatic properties and the aromas related to cinnamon, but the chemical properties are quite different than cinnamon. So um, put a couple drops on your fingers and run your hands through your hair to provide a pleasant aroma to your hair. Put a drop in the citrus blends or diffuse it with clove, ginger, or Christmas spirit during fall and winter. Um, and like I said, if you use it topically, dilute it, dilute it with a carrier oil because it'll feel hot on the skin. Um, use with caution if pregnant and avoid sensitive areas like the eyes. And don't use on children because it's, it's very, very hot. Um, it's also an immune system supporter. So um, it was used in the... Um, 
in the purification process. So think about how cool that was that um, God gave them a formula for this purification oil. I think this will come up later. Um, and they, you know, in ancient times, they didn't know it was cleansing. It was just, it smelled good and they were told to use it. So they used it, but it, it's um, disinfecting the, uh, all the tools they use for sacrificing the animals. You know, all the blood and the, and the feces and all that stuff when you're slaughtering animals. And so they clean up the bowls and the altar and the, and the um, knives and all that stuff with this um, anointing oil. Okay, the next one is cedar wood. So cedar wood, his young shoots will grow. His splendor will be like an olive tree. His fragrance like a cedar of Lebanon. And that's from Hosea 14.6. So this um, wood is mentioned 21 times in the Bible. And this wood was used to be build Solomon's beautiful temple. And it was known for its durability. The ancient Egyptians used cedar wood oil to embalm for perfumery and in cosmetics. And the ancient Greeks used cedar wood oil on their bodies as they believed it helped to make one immortal. I don't know why you'd want to be immortal, but. Um, so cedar wood has a warm woodsy aroma that creates a comforting and uplifting aroma. It's often found in men's aftershades and colognes because of its scent. So you can add a drop to your aftershave lotion Add it to your favorite skincare products or lotions for smoother skin. Add it to your shampoo and conditioner for shinier, healthy looking hair. And many people find it helpful for restful sleep, for diffusing or applying topically before bed. So um, cedar wood um, was also, um, let's see. Cedar wood is also known for um, boosting mental capacity. And Solomon, right, he's the wisest man in the Bible. His whole temple was made, his whole, yeah, his whole palace was made of cedar wood. So he's breathing this in all the time, making his mind sharper. So great oil to have. Okay, cypress. Cypress, he cut down cedars or perhaps took a cypress or oak. He let it grow among the trees of the forest or planted a pine and the rain made it grow. This is from Isaiah 44, 14. The oil is extracted from the cypress tree, which has wood so durable that the cypress doors of Rome's St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, no signs of decay even after 1200 years. So the doors at St. Peter's are made of cedar cypress and they're still not decaying. Um, if you know anybody that does working, woodworking, they know if you're making oil, uh, wood products, furniture for outdoors, Cypress is an awesome wood to use. It's mentioned five times in the Bible, all in the Old Testament. And um, the tree was mostly used for its wood because it was strong and durable. Noah used cypress to build the ark. Then Greeks and Romans used it for relieving upset tummies and used the leaves of the tree um, so we can't say it, but um, Google it. Um, it's a fresh and herbaceous aroma. It can be grounding and energizing at the same time when diffused, and it can help restore feelings of security and stability. Um, it helps um, support 
healthy immune system, or I mean, not immune system, circulatory system. So if you have problems with circulation, this might be a good support oil to use. So if you have oily complexion, one drop in your moisturizer will help with that condition. Um, four to six drops in your diffuser for motivation. Oh, here we go. And three drops of cypress with a carrier oil and massage your legs to get the blood flowing and your energy and motivation up before a run or a walk. I, it's an evergreen that's frequently used in landscaping. So I bet you see it all the time and you had no idea it was a cypress. So search Google for an image so you can see what it looks like. Okay, frankincense. Love, love, love frankincense. It's one of those oils that you sometimes have to get used to, but once you do, oh, it's amazing. It's an earthy and uplifting smell that creates a comforting and empowering environment. So um, the verse is, on coming to the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That's from Matthew 2.11. The Hebrew word for frankincense is levona, L-E-V-O-N-A, and it's used in the Bible 22 times, making one of the most recognized materials in scripture. Sometimes English just interprets it to incense, not frankincense. So sometimes if you see the word incense, they might actually mean frankincense in the Bible. And of course, um, it was given as the gift to baby Jesus. Um, it's um, one of the consecrated incenses described in the Bible as being used in offering ceremonies in the temple in Jerusalem. And it was a symbolness, symbol of holiness and righteousness. The gift of frankincense to the Christ child was symb symbolic of his willingness to become a sacrifice, wholly giving himself up analogous to a burnt offering like the sacrifices and ceremonies in the temple. It's also said to be symbolic of his deity because frankincense was normally given to the newborn sons of kings and priests. So of course, Jesus was both a king and a priest. So um, the smell creates a comforting, safe and empowering environment. Um, so uh, diffuse it or apply it during meditation and prayer. Um, a drop on your moisturizer for your face. Um, a drop or two to your hand moisturizer to help avoid those dry hands. And apply a few drops of frankincense to the girls daily. Frankincense is um, got properties that help cells stay normal. So the girls can use a little help staying normal. Um, frankincense was also um, rubbed on, it can help with um, breathing. So if you massage it on a newborn, it not only anoints them, but it also um, helps them breathe for the first time better. So, and it is okay to use um, straight or mix it with a mixing oil to uh, anoint a newborn. Just rub it all over their body. Okay, the next one is hyssop. It's in the same family as mint. And the verse is from Psalm 51 7. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. The 12 biblical references to this plant indicate it was likely used in practices and rituals intended to purify and cleanse. So hyssop has a slightly sweet scent that was considered a sacred oil in ancient Egypt, um, Israel, and Greece. 
and it was used in traditional and herbal practices for centuries to promote wellness. Okay, it, um, its fragrant scent stimulates creativity and meditation. Apply a drop or two um, or diffuse four to eight drops during work, play, yoga, or a long study session. Dilute well if using topically and don't use on smaller children. Um, hyssop branch. Remember um, the story of the Passover where the, uh, the um, Jewish people were told to dip their hyssop branch in the lamb's blood and then anoint their uh, lentil posts above their doors for the um, angel of death to pass over their house. So hyssop cleansing, um, repelling of, of um, bad spirits. And it's also great for um, breathing. So when they um, gave Jesus the uh, sour wine on a sponge, they used a hyssop branch because the hyssop, you know, um, crucifixion is death by asphyxiation. So the hyssop would help their breathing as well. So hyssop is awesome for um, breathing support. Okay, the next one is myrrh. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. Mark 15, 23. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bound out and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Matthew 2, 11. Myrrh is mentioned 17 times in the Bible and is found in both the Old and New Testaments. It was one of the key ingredients in Moses' anointing oil and as incense in the Holy Temple. It is also used particularly for the mouth and gums. It was given to the baby Jesus by one of the wise men and it is said this was to foreshadow his death because in ancient times it symbolized bitterness, suffering, and affliction. Lastly, it was also employed in embalming and religious ceremonies, and Jesus was buried with it. So it was the myrrh and the aloes that were the embalming. Today, myrrh is an oil valued around the world. It's recognized for its beautifying properties and grounding aromas. And it's an essential oil that's used commonly in cosmetic and aromatic industries because um, it's said to um, fix the scent of the perfume so that it doesn't fade quickly. It is said to help promote a smooth and youthful complexion and it has many health benefits. So add it with frankincense to your daily skincare routine, add to any skin balm recipe, diffuse four to eight drops for calming and relaxing environment. Okay, myrtle. Nehemiah 8.15, go out into the hill country and bring back branches from olive and wild olive trees and from myrtles, palms, and shade trees to make temporary shelters, as it is written. Biblically, myrtle branches were used in ceremonies and were also a sign of God's goodness, and they are mentioned seven times, all in the Old Testament. Um, Sukkot, commonly transfer, translated as the Feast of Tabernacles, includes myrtle branches in its ceremony. It's a week-long Jewish holiday that comes five day, days after Yom Kippur, and Sukkot celebrates the gathering of the harvest and commemorates the miraculous pr protection God provided for the children of Israel when they left Egypt. It is still used in Sukkot ceremonies today. It is difficult to source 
and has a fresh sweet aroma which may help clear the mind. Two favorite oil blends containing myrtle are Purification and RC. Um, add it to your nighttime skin routine to enhance your skin and add four, or four to eight drops to diffusing to elevate your mood. And it seems like um, Myrtle was also, isn't Myrtle the one you use for um, your voice? Let me find this other. I think singers use Myrtle for cleansing their throat or I should have used these other. Myrtle, yes. Um, yeah, for mucus in your throat before singing. And modern uses, it's a good support of your thyroid. Um, it's great for the skin conditions of acne, psoriasis, and blemishes. So it's an awesome oil. Um, Onica is no longer in the... Um, well, maybe it is. Um, Onica was um, the an ingredient in the pure and holy perfume or incense the Lord commanded Moses to make. And the the Bible verse is Exodus thirty thirty four. Then the Lord said to Moses, "Take fragrant spices, gum resin, Onica, and galbanum." and pure frankincense, all in equal amounts. Onica, um, for those of you who um, are my age or older, when you used to go into a hospital, the um, smell that you smelled there was um, uh, benzoine, which is made from Onica. And that's what they used for cleansing wounds and, and um, purifying, like before they cut into someone for surgery or if they had a wound to cleanse it. Um, it's a balsamic resin obtained from the bark of several species of trees. It has a sweet and woody vanilla-like aroma and it's very, very, very thick and sticky. So if your bottle gets um, too hard to open, you have to take one of those gripper things for opening and then um, cleanse it off with some uh, rubbing alcohol to get that off of there. Onika is mentioned in the Bible one time directly and 54 times indirectly. It was a really important oil of ancient times. So it's calming, it's good for skin care, and um, it can help keep a wound together because of its stickiness properties. So um, it's a great oil to have on hand. You can't buy it separately. It only comes in the oil of the Bible kit. And the last one is Rose of Sharon, or you can buy it uh, separately as Cystus. So the Bible verse is Song of Solomon 2.1. I am a rose of Sharon, a lily of the valleys. Like a lily among thorns is my darling among the young women. Like an apple tree among the trees of the forest is my beloved among the young men. I like to sit in his shade and his fruit is sweet to my taste. So, um, so Cystus is believed to be the biblical rose of Sharon. What was the Bible verse on that again? Um, Song of Solomon 2.1. Okay. Shepherds in biblical times frequently use Rose of Sharon for cuts and wounds. 
It was shown, said to help slow breathing, bleeding and prevent infection. Sorry. It was also used as perfume and may have been another component of incense in biblical times. Its um, fragrance is soothing and uplifting. Most of the biblical oils are soothing and uplifting. Um, calming to your emotions when diffused. When you can create a calming atmosphere, your spirits can rise, which is perfect for this time of year. Um, apply two to three drops diluted to joints when needed. Apply two to three drops to a boo-boo roller or any skin balm recipe. Um, or diffuse four to eight drops for a calming atmosphere, perfect for meditation. Um, I have um, all of my biblical oils in this one case. And I just love to put this case right up to my nose and just smell the whole case. It just smells so good. It's an a real earthy, um, musky type smell. Most of the oils of the Bible are um, pretty strong scents to them. So, um, so and when I need you do to go, that, Cricket. Yeah. And when you bring that little case up to your nose and smell all that, just remember yeah. that's what Jesus probably smelled like. Yes, exactly. Isn't that amazing? I know. I mean, Somebody once said to me, um, I don't want to do essential oils because they're new age. I'm like, honey, <laughs> myrrh, frankincense, baby Jesus. That's not new age. No. Never could convince her. But so um, this is a different um, set of uh, slides. So I'm going to just go through this real quickly. There's a lot of good numbers in here. I mean, myrrh is mentioned 156 times in the Bible. Um, frankincense, 81 times. Cedarwood, 70. And you can see um, over 600 references to essential oils or the aromatic plants from which they were extracted. And they're referred to also as fragrances, odors, ointments, aromas, perfumes, or sweet savors. There are four references to the oil of joy or gladness and how oils rejoice the heart in the Bible. So, um, and I believe that's on the, yeah, that's on the um, reference sheet that I'll send you. These four verses are listed on there. And I already have all your names already on the email to send this to you. So you'll get all that. Um, and then, of course, um, Sandalwood, a uh, couple. Yeah, there's more verses on the, um, on the handout. Um, there's a couple oils that are not in the Oils of the Bible kit that are kind of blends of oils. So Exodus 2, um, I don't know if that's still available, but its counterpart is thieves. So Exodus 2 is approximately the blend of the holy anointing oil as it's prescribed in the Bible. And of course, thieves is the modern day version of the cleansing oil. And then there's a three wise men oil blend um, and its counterpart is valor. So valor for courage and emotional support. Use valor on your spine as its frequency is similar to that of bones. So it's a good one to rub on your spine, on your spine. So um, this, these show like Cassie is found in Exodus 2 and fulfill your destiny. Um, cedar wood is found in brain power, stress away, grounding, highest potential, inspiration, sacred mountain, tranquil. So that kind of gives you an idea of what this oil is good for. Your mind. Um, Cypress is found in aroma seas, aroma life, and RC. 
frankincense is in a ton of oils and a bunch of skincare products. Hyssop for cleansing. It's in white angelica. Mm. White angelica, that's the one for um, repelling negative energies, right? Awaken, harmony. Exodus 2, relieve it and immu power. So these oils, you're getting them in everyday products that you get. Myrrh in humility, white angelica, Exodus 2, three wise men, abundance and hope. Myrtle in inspiration, end effects, purification, RC. Remember, um, RC is respiratory comfort and myrtle was the one for... Um, for uh, reducing phlegm in your throat. Onica, um, only found in the oils of ancient scripture. And cystus is found in immu power, ula balance, and the gift. So those are all the, and the box is just beautiful. This, um, this gold here is kind of shiny on the box and it's a real pretty presentation. So so that was way too much that? information, right? How much was that? <laughs> but it was How great. <laughs> oh. How much is that for a, um, can you tell me? I, I don't have record of that. Um, I'd have to look it up. Let's see. I was say, last time I knew it was about 200, but maybe it's more Yeah, than about that. 225, I think. Yeah, I was yeah. just going to say it's about 225. But you can get you it with be... points, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you can buy it with points. That's right. Yeah. Good job, Bonnie. <laughs> I love the fact that between raindrops, the everyday, and the ancient oils or oils of ancient scripture, which it was funny because I was trying to figure out the correct terminology for the kit. All <laughs> three of them are like good rotation oils throughout the month to use. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, any other questions? So your class tonight, Cricket, were you reading from David Stewart's book? Um, actually I was reading from, um, the one from Grow Workspace. Okay. The, the one from David's book is much more comprehensive. He gives ancient uses he gives modern uses, so I should have used that one, um, but um, it's probably not real compliant anymore, so, um, but it's, uh, it's an amazing book, so. So how, how much is the um, healing, uh, healing Oil Kit of the Bible? How much is that one? Um, we were thinking around $225, Joby. Okay. All right. Um, and if you save up your points, you can use your points to buy it. If you're um, if you're buying monthly and getting the points, so yeah. Back on that. You want to show people uh, David Stewart's book yeah. again? Too, yeah. Just in case they want to get a reference of. Yeah. Um, so. So this is David's website. Um, so you, I put that link in your, in your email. Um, it's raindroptraining.com. And you just go down here to um, purchase books and DVDs. And then there's, you know, the different categories. So um, all different kinds of stuff here. <coughs> the abundance book interesting 
And then also um, Amazon has the, um, oh, where'd it go? Healing Oils of the Bible by David Stewart. So I put that link in there too. So it's 1968 on Amazon. And then the, um, this other book by him, The Chemistry of Essential Oils Made Simple. <laughs> it's this thick. It's like, what, 500 pages or something? 5,000 pages? Let me Whoa, see. that's oh. made simple, all right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the wording is not simple. <laughs> I thought the wording was pretty... Um, clear for the concepts that he's uh, 625 pages yeah it weighs two three pounds <laughs> this book weighs three pounds so yeah so anything by david stewart is um is really good stuff he does a good job of of putting things in ways that are easy to understand his dvd is really good so you could have some friends over have the oils of the bible kit on hand and just put in his dvd and then pass around the oils when he talks about it so that's fun doing that i oh i wanted to remind people that that was how we got introduced to the essential oils when we did the Oils of the Bible in Grand Rapids. I was like, I couldn't believe yeah. it. I mean, when we got all those oils out and they said, by the time this class is done, you're going to have most of your clothes off. And I thought to myself, <laughs> really? <laughs> sure enough, we're taking our socks off. We're taking <laughs> yeah, they had them put it in all, all different stuff. places. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. It was the most amazing experience to start up at seven, got done at 10, and I could not get back to sleep till like 1 a.m. because <laughs> the frequency of the oils were just amazing. Yeah. What do we have, yeah. 27 of them or something? Oh, oils of the Bible? No, there was just 12 or 12 or 14. I think, yeah. I think they added more than just oh. the kit. That oh, made. okay. Okay. Because yeah. I remember seeing a lot more bottles on the table than I realized. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? All right, everyone. Have a Christmas. very Merry Christmas. And a yes. um, Happy New Year. And we will see you the first Wednesday in January. Awesome. Thanks, Merry Frick, Christmas. That was very good. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you now. Year. Happy New Year. Bye. Happy, Happy New Year. Happy birthday, Cricket. Thank you. Happy <laughs> birthday, Cricket. Happy. Is it your yeah. birthday today? No, the 29th. Oh, happy birthday ahead of time. Thank you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Cricket. Happy birthday. <laughs> she froze up. <laughs> <laughs> Love you too. Love you too. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye. Bye. Bye Cricket. <laughs>